The juggler was good. Why he couldn't put that kind of application into getting a real job, I had no idea. Maybe he just liked dressing up like a horse's ass. There was a small crowd of five sightseers. It's a weird thing, but you can take the most intelligent people in the world, put them in their vacation duds, and hey presto, they look like morons. Why is that? Hey, you with the balls. We? Oui? What do you know about the Knights Templar? Le Templier? Ah, the last Grandmaster, Jacques Dumoulin, was burnt on an island in the Seine in 1314. Wow. You're pretty well educated for a juggler. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. How did you learn to be a juggler? Juggler? What is this juggler? It's you. You juggle, that makes you a juggler. No, I am a jongleur. A jongleur? What's that? Mon dieu! A jongleur is an artist, a master of the contragravitic aerobaletic mysteries. In centuries past, the courts of the crowned of Europe had the jongleurs, witty erudite men to whom the monarchs turned in their hours of need. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Our enemies are at the borders, plague ravages the land, and the peasants are revolting. Thank God we've got Chuckles the Jongler to throw his balls around. I don't think so. That juggling doesn't look so difficult. Oh, it does not, does it not? Perhaps you feel you could do better, no? I'll give it a try. Be my guest. I had no idea what I was doing. But this guy was obviously an idiot, so how difficult could it be? A lot more difficult than I thought. That's how difficult. Still, it was my big chance to be derided by complete strangers. Not so easy after all, is it? No, I guess not. Look. A red nose. Ah, you are a clown. A clown? No. If so, you would be a much better jongleur. For a moment, an idea capered around near the spotlight of my attention, but fell down the pothole of abstraction before I could focus on it. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Hello again, officer. Hello again, monsieur. What do you think of the juggler? Ah, he is excellent, most watchable. But he's blocking the thoroughfare and obstructing traffic. So? He is amusing. The traffic isn't. If he wants to block it, who am I to say no? You're a cop. Ah. Oui. So I am. Ah, well. Does this red nose mean anything to you? Ah, you are a clown. Do I look like a clown? No, although you juggle like one. Now, if I'd known you were a clown, it would have been amusing. And not a humiliation for you. What do you mean? Who ever heard of a plain clothes clown? He had a point. So you're saying that if I juggle badly with a red nose, I'd be the king of comedy. But if I juggle badly without it... You look like a pathetic loon. Oui, monsieur. You have it. I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. Hi again. Oui? What is it this time? I'd like to have another try at juggling, please. You have gone on a crash course, perhaps? No. I just had an insight into presentation. Huh? Allow me to demonstrate. The balls, please. 
if you insist on completing your humiliation, monsieur. Okay, now for my secret weapon. The juggler was speechless with rage. You could have mistaken him for a mime. And without a word, he collected his balls and left in a fury. Hey! You forgot one of your balls! Hey! But he didn't hear. Better still, deprived of his entertainment, the gendarme decided maybe he ought to do some policing for a change. In the middle of the square was a manhole. I wondered if there might be something relevant beneath street level. There were three arches, each with an inscription. A weird little boat lay tied up. I guess they used it to get maintenance crews around. Either that or the Phantom of the Opera was somewhere near. A hook dangled from the end of a heavy-duty chain. Close up, I could see a faded inscription. My medieval French isn't much, but the few words I understood seemed to say, this is where the gallows used to stand. Maybe. The inscription was hard to read, but I made out Templier and something about innocence. The inscription was undecipherable. The plaster had cracked and was falling away. I wondered why. Nothing hollow there. That sounded pretty solid. Hey, that's hollow. It was time for some brutal destruction. I'd poked a hole in an historical site. If any archaeologists came by, they'd lynch me for this. Close up, I could see the plaster was thinner where I'd broken through. And behind it were some cogs and a lever. Here goes. Hey, cool! Inside the hole, I could see one of the cogs had come loose and jammed the mechanism solid.
The door mechanism was trashed. At the bottom of the steps, I could see a glow. It seemed a good moment to be cautious. There was a crack in the wall. Through it, I could see a glimmer of natural light. In the beginning was the end. An end wrought by our enemies began our darkness. In the end will be a beginning. An end to our enemies heralds our new day. Report. The military establishments are in flux. The end of the Cold War has left them with no clear goal and as obvious targets for budgetary cuts. We have successfully promoted a sense of betrayal in the upper echelons. They feel that the politicians have cast them adrift. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Good, mademoiselle. Governments are giving the corporations more respect than their own citizens. A groundswell of dissatisfaction and dissidence is growing. The corporations are becoming too large and complex for their own executives to control them. A blind belief in market forces is accelerating this trend the world over. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. The global population's belief in those that govern it has never been lower. We have inculcated a sense of immediacy and action over forethought and planning in all the major governments. They are acting on hasty decisions that cannot be completed or revoked without appearing foolish. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Excellent. The tired old governments are dying a slow death from their own incompetence and our machinations. The millennium is almost upon us and everything is in place for the rise of our new order. Almost. Professor, where is the broken sword? Oh, as we discussed last time, with the loss of the manuscript, our search is as a corollary hindered. And as discussed last time, you have been furnished with a dramatically increased budget. What have you been doing with our money, Professor? We are working on the principle that the Templars... <coughs> that is to say, our predecessors... Hold on. These are the Templars? Must have left a trail when they were hiding the clues to the sort of Baphomet's location. I have a small army of historians and archaeologists ferreting out that trail. I trust these historians and archaeologists are more trustworthy than your friend Pegram. Pegram was loyal. He tried to protect the Lokmarn gem when the Hashashin came near and failed. And don't call that Syrian maniac the Hashashin. He's an assassin, plain and simple. That's not what he believes. He actually thinks. Silence! Do I have to remind you that we have a sacred duty? A trust? When Philippe attempted to destroy the Order, we lost the sword and our power with it. Now we have the opportunity to reforge it. But time is short. We need results. Not petty bickering. Not excuses. Now, Professor Baphomet. Yes, of course, my apologies. We will find Baphomet and the sword manuscript or no. We have already found another element actually within Paris. Excellent. What is it? Well, 
We're not exactly sure at present. Ha! But I have my best people working on it. You would do well not to criticize others, Eklund. At least I have not murdered one of our own. Of course. That guy was the bogus doctor in the hospital. Marquet was a liability. Eklund dealt with him on my orders. I beg your pardon, Grandmaster. I did not mean to. Have you any good news for us, Professor? We already know three of the elements. We know that Klausner had obtained the lens before he vanished. Where was he? Syria. We know that he arrived, but after that, nothing. The assassin. I fear so. It's a shame. Klausner was a good operative. This will be our last meeting in person until we locate the sort of Baphomet. I hope that I don't need to emphasize the importance of finding it. Without it, our endeavors come to nothing. With the sword reforged, we will have the power to sweep the stage of all opposition. The new millennium will belong to us. The next time that we meet, it will be to become the princess of this world! The water seemed to belong to an underground river or something. It was way too deep to belong to the catacombs. On the circle's circumference were the Templar seal and two Latin phrases. Non omnis moriar and clarior e tenebris. I shall not die completely, the brighter from the darkness. There was a large circle marked out on the floor with a stump in the middle. Around the circle I could see words inlaid into the stone. In the middle of the circle was a stump of stone, a shaft of daylight from the world above lancing down to touch it. I noticed three small notches around the edge of the stump's top. The light, falling from above, struck the gem and scattered in five neat rays, and each ray picked out a letter. Starting from the seal, I could read M-A-R-I-B, Marib. Now all I had to do was figure out what the heck that meant. Nico, I've seen them. Who? The Templars. I spied on their meeting in the catacombs. And you saw the Knights Templar? I saw a bunch of guys masquerading as Templars. They're after something called the Sword of Baphomet. The bogus doctor was there. The guy who killed Marquet. The manuscript is the key, just as we thought. It shows the way to the broken sword, whatever that is. And how does the assassin fit into all this? He's out to stop them. 
These Neo-Templars, they're men and women in influential positions. Don't you see? Plantar was one of them. The assassin killed him for the manuscript, to stop them finding the sword. But now we have got the manuscript. Yes. So, how do they hope to find the sword? I don't know. They said something about a lens and a guy called Klausner who's gone to Syria. But they didn't seem to realize the significance of the very sight of their meeting. You see, after they'd gone, I discovered a stone pedestal and a carved inscription. I set up the gem on the tripod, directly below a beam of light. The gem split the beam and lit the letters M-A-R-I-B. Marip is a village in Syria. Then the Neo-Templars are ahead of us. Klausner beat me to it. You're not thinking of going there yourself, are you? Why not? These guys are crazy and dangerous. That reminds me, you should leave the gem here. Okay. What about the tripod? I'll send it back to André. Anonymously. Do you think I should go to Marib? Syria is a long way, Georges.